Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from stepbystepainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a pink flamingo with a sunset background. We are going to work on some feather texture in this, a little bit more of a detailed painting. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the colors and brushes they used for this. We have eight colors. We are gonna need titanium white, Mars black, primary red and medium magenta, cad yellow light hue, poker's green hue permanent, deep violet and cerulean blue. And as far as the brushes, I used four different brushes for this. So I used a number 12 bright brush, which is like a half inch flat brush. I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush, a number eight round brush. I love this brush because of the fine tip to it. I used that in the feather texture of the flamingo and a number four round brush. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our blank canvas. This is an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I have it vertically. And I'm gonna go ahead and define the horizon line because the background of this painting is kind of this simple sort of ocean sunset background. And I'm going to mark about six inches from the bottom of the canvas. And then with the T-square ruler, which is super helpful because I can line this up with the side of the canvas and make this a nice parallel line. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line all the way across. So everything above that line will be our sky and everything below that will be our water. Next, let's go ahead and use our three quarter wash brush. Let's load that into the water and we can kind of tap it dry on the side. So I don't wanna completely dry this brush, but I wanna use some of that water that's still on the brush to help with this paint. So this is cerulean blue. This is our, we'll just call it the blue. And we're gonna take this blue and kind of distribute some of that water on the brush into that paint, kind of thins it down. That's super helpful with spreading this paint across the canvas. And we're just going to do left and right strokes. So we're painting a sunset now. So this is going to be a gradient of these colors on our palette of this blue, purple, pink, yellow, and white. And so our darkest colors at the top, that's the blue. And we're gonna go down about two or three inches left and right strokes should be relatively thin because of that water but it's not watercolor consistency and then without rinsing the brush grab a little bit of that purple so this is deep violet that's a strong and kind of dark color it's actually darker than that blue so you need a little bit at first and start below your blue and then blend it up into the blue so we're gonna work what I like to call that transition zone where our blue turns into purple. So where those two colors meet, you wanna just paint over that line where the colors meet several times. And when you paint over it several times, that causes the blue and purple to mix together and transition. So you can get a nice gradient blend of blue to purple and I'm gonna go down about the same amount of space as I did with the blue, so two or three inches with the purple and go down. Doesn't have to be exact. Then let's rinse the blue and purple off of our wash brush and um, kind of tap that dry. We're going to do the pink next. So I got my water. Don't wanna dry it completely, but some of that water that's left on the brush is going to be helpful to kind of thin the pink down a little bit. Actually gonna kind of wipe some of that water off, but not all of it, so it's not too drippy wet. Take that pink, start below the purple, so same thing, start below your color, and then blend it up into the color, and our transition zone right there where pink and purple meet, we're just gonna brush over that several times, we're just gonna go back and forth, working that paint, getting that pink and purple to blend together and then once they're kind of blurred and blended together we can take that pink and bring that down two or three inches we should have space left below that pink for our yellow and orange that we're going to transition to next so working that transition zone again
and then we're going to introduce yellow and orange to this. So if we load yellow onto our brush right now, it might become a little muddy because there might still be a little bit of purple on the brush from when we blended. So if that happens, go ahead and rinse your brush off completely. And let's start with some fresh yellow that doesn't have any purple on it so it doesn't turn brown and muddy. So just take that yellow and below your pink, do the same thing and then blend it up into your pink. That is how we get that really pretty orange in this sky because that yellow and pink mixed together will make that orange. You just wanna be really careful that um, none of the purple goes down into the orange and yellow area. Otherwise, your sky might get some brown colors in there. So go down about a couple inches. There should, there should be a gap still left above the horizon line. And for that, I completely rinsed my brush off and grabbed just the yellow. So we want this really bright, light, sort of lemon yellow glow just above the horizon line. And you only want to use white and um, it should turn into a very, very light yellow. You can add little tiny bits of yellow in there if you need to, but it should be very light and bright. Blend that up into your orange area. And then man, just a little bit of pink in here. I wanna bring out some of that orange. Just taking a little bit of that pink and kind of blending that into the sky. So your sky will look a little bit different from mine and that's okay. And so we have our pretty sunset gradient. And next we're gonna fill everything below that line with a very light blue color. So next I'm going to completely rinse that brush off and we're going to make a very light blue color. So let's use that cerulean blue that's on our palette and we're gonna mix a lot of white into it. In fact, I'm just gonna take all of this white and then grab just a very, very small amount of that blue. So this needs to be a very, very light blue, like six parts white, one part blue. Go ahead and test it out. It should be very, very light, um, so a lot. Just pretty much the rest of this white. You can add more white on your palette if needed. So this should be like a very light sort of sky blue color. And we're just gonna paint the entire sort of ocean area. So that's everything below that horizontal line with this light blue color. So using the three quarter flat wash brush, left and right strokes all the way across the canvas. Um, add more white to this. It does not need to be, so we're not doing like a blending or gradient thing here, but if the color kind of varies, so like you can see how this looks lighter than that first set that I applied, that's okay. So if it looks streaky, some areas might have dark, some areas might light have light, that's okay. Um, in a much later step, we'll be painting the sunset reflection on the water, but for now it's just a very, very light blue. If yours ends up being like this, a solid color all throughout, that's fine as well. Just go ahead and fill the entire area from the line to the bottom of the canvas with this. You'll need a lot of white for this step. Just be very careful not to get that blue water above the horizon line. It needs to stay below that line. Use the tip of your brush to really kind of cut in on that. and then go to the bottom of the canvas.
When you're done with that, go ahead and rinse the brush off and let's set this three quarter inch to the side. I believe we are done with this brush for the rest of the painting. You are going to need either your four round or eight round for this and Holker's Green Hue Permanent. I will use the four round brush. Um, let's go ahead and load that brush in the water and then use that water just kind of distribute that into the green. I'm going to actually add purple into this so this is going to make a very dark color almost look it almost just looks like it's black. Um, so green and purple mixed together both of those dark colors. I'm going to start on the left I'm going to paint this land area and it's going to go all the way across my horizon line and you saw me measure something there so the height of that sort of mountainy hill goes up about an inch so if you want to mark that so that's as high as it gets everything just kind of goes lower from there so there's a few little peaks and dips and you just kind of like paint that initial line and then you want to go ahead and paint all of that in solid so I'm really just kind of using a mix of the green and purple so those colors just kind of blend together dark and um, green and purple you have darker black looking color some more green it doesn't really matter if you want to make it so the lighter color at the top is kind of green so it looks like the sun's kind of reflecting the top part it's lighter and it's darker on the bottom you can do that but I just kind of let them mix together and do their own thing so go ahead and apply all that green fill all of that space up and try not to go under your horizon line And then next we will be painting the two little palm trees that are on the left. And I'm just gonna use the exact same color. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush and kind of twist that brush to get that paint distributed right on the tip of the bristles because I know I'm going to be painting something small and detailed. And you can also use a paint pen for this or even a smaller brush for this. But we're gonna do Two little palm trees over here on the left. So I'm going to do two lines. So the trunk of these trees start out kind of thin and then the line gets a little bit thicker. And then I'm, I'm going to do the, the palm fronds. So again, very fine detail, steady hand for this, but we're just doing the middle lines and those just kind of just dragging those lines outwards from the top of that tree trunk. And then the little palm leaves, I'm just kind of dragging that down. So I'm only using just the tip of the brush to create that. So you do the, the, the little lines and then the little leaves, almost like you're barely letting that brush touch the canvas that creates that very thin, fine detail. Very carefully. And then that is it for those palm trees. We don't really need to go super detailed with this background. 
because the flamingo is the main focus of this. So that's why we're not doing a lot of details in the background. We'll do water reflection later on, but let's go ahead and let this dry. And then we will be drawing our flamingo with a piece of chalk. I do have a tracer for this if you wanna print out the traceable and use that. Otherwise, we'll do the drawing with a piece of chalk. Flamingos are a relatively simple drawing. I'm gonna start by making a couple of marks on my canvas. So this is dry and let's take our ruler and measure about six and a half inches. I'm just gonna make a little dot right there at six and a half inches for the width. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and make a mark at three and a half inches. So this mark is going to be right here. So I have two points marked that are gonna help me with the drawing of the body of the flamingo. I'm gonna start with the mark on the left. I'm gonna draw an arc, and that arc is gonna go above the horizon, above the mountain line, overlapping part of that sky. And I'm gonna stop at that original mark that I created. So we can draw over that several times, but that is the, Flamingo's back. And then over here in the upper right part of the sky, I'm gonna draw an oval that's kind of pointed downwards. So if you want the measurement for this, it's about two inches and two inches from the top and the side. And the width of the oval is about two and a half inches. So then we're gonna take this and we're going to draw the the neck. So for the neck, I'm just gonna do one line at first. Started on the top left of that oval and drew kind of this stretched out S shape. And then it attached down to that point where that, um, that body, where we drew the body. And then we can create this into more of a shape. So I'm gonna take this, kind of draw like this curve part. And then it's going to go parallel to the first line that we drew. So I'm drawing this very slowly, kind of sketch, like not one continuous line. And that line goes all the way down to the bottom edge of that canvas. And there's like a little curve from the body that where it attaches to the neck. And then we can draw the beak. So I'm gonna do like this diagonal line and almost a vertical line pointing downwards and then like a curved line on the right and then a little triangle that overlaps part of the oval of the head. And then, so this is just a, a regular a baby wipe. So the chalk will wipe clean. We can erase that curve that's attached to, to the beak. And then we can clean up some of our lines if needed. And we can draw kind of a line inside of the beak for the, to divide that beak. This line curves down and there's that little curve that attaches to the body. This line curves down and then goes off the canvas. And the beak of this flamingo is fairly long, so it measures about three and a half inches down from the top of the beak to the tip. And then if you want, you can draw a little circle right here for the sun so you can get the placement of that sun in. And then we can go ahead and start painting the first layer of the flamingo in. So I used two different kind of pink colors for this. So primary red is a red color, but it has a, a pink kind of tint to it. And titanium white, I use cad yellow light hue. So that's gonna give you more of a coral color in your pinks and then medium magenta. So four colors on the palette and these four colors were all used in the flamingo. So before we can paint the feather texture, we need to paint the first layer of this and that's going to be just simply kind of filling up the shape of the flamingo first. So this is a 12 bright brush and I'm gonna grab about equal amounts primary red and titanium white. So I'm gonna mix those colors 
on the palette, but it's not really important that they mix all the way because we can get kind of um, two different colors here by not mixing them all the way. And we're going to just, I'm gonna start on the back and I'm gonna do curved strokes to fill in this shape. So if I'm painting towards the edge of the flamingo shape, I wanna use just the tip of the brush to make sure that line on the edge is nice and clean. And then for painting the inside part, we can use the full width of the brush to paint those thicker lines. The titanium white is especially important for this first layer because it's going to help cover the background layers. So that dark mountain, we wanna make sure that gets covered. And if you need to add more white in that area to cover it, you can. So I'm just going to keep painting. So I'm going to, it's going to curve down and then we're going to curve up in the neck. So as you reload, you don't have to grab the same amount of the primary red and white. You can grab a different amount of those colors. So see how that color just kind of varies and that's okay. And it's just kind of blending on the canvas. So we're kind of doing this intentional varied look with the color. I'm going to just kind of take my time and go down here. We have this curve on his face that goes around the beak and use the tip of the brush to get into the smaller areas. So that time I grabbed a little bit more of that darker color. I'm just going to fill this in. So I call these contouring strokes because they go kind of in the direction of the shape. So see how this kind of curves? So my brush is going to curve in that direction. This is going to curve this way and that color is not blending all the way. So I have this two-toned look with that dark pink and that white. So I'm just gonna continue painting this shape in. I'm gonna stay relatively inside of the chalk drawing. Although as I'm painting this, I am adjusting the drawing a little bit. So the neck I'm actually making a little bit thinner than what I drew. You can do the same or you can just, if you feel more comfortable, just paint, filling in what you drew. That is definitely okay too. So right here, I added some darker, more of that primary red towards the right side of the neck and also towards the bottom. It's a little bit more darker and shadowy in the bottom right. Next, I'm gonna introduce some of this yellow color in here and this is gonna be really fun and super pretty. That yellow will give your pink more of a coral color. So that's Cad Yellow Light and I'm just mixing it with the white and the primary red. Um, if it's too dark, add more white to it so it shouldn't be super dark orange, it should be more of a coral color. And I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this body area. So here, we're gonna do more expressive strokes, um, not really the curved strokes that we were doing, but we're just doing very, very long angled strokes that kind of go in different directions. And it'll fill up that area of the flamingo's back. And keep in mind that this is just the first layer. Our second layer is going to be the feather texture. So right now, if it doesn't look like feathers, that's okay. This is just the first layer. And we're just focusing on filling it all up. There shouldn't be any of that ocean color showing through. And we're using a variety of the colors. So that coral, but then also we can grab the medium magenta that we added to our palette. So it's a little bit more pink. We can add more white. So we have the three different kind of colors that are all working together and just blending together. So as I go to reload, I'm grabbing different amounts of all the colors. So right here, it's turning really pretty orange. Um, but if yours seems to be kind of too dark, you can always grab more of the titanium white and that white is going to lighten it up a lot and make it look more like a pink and coral. I'm actually gonna add more of this primary red to my palette and more titanium white. And then continue to fill up this space over here in the lower right. I'm not trying to over blend the colors. So I like that there's different amounts of like orange and pink and light pink kind of all blended together in this area. 
And then up here, so if we have a little bit of that mountain kind of showing through, we can take some of that titanium white. So since titanium white is such an opaque color, that's gonna help you get coverage. So right here where we see that dark mountain kind of showing through, we can just go back over that area with a lighter layer with the titanium white and any of the pinks that are on our palette and just kind of paint that and we can just kind of take that and blend it in with the rest. Make sure nothing is showing through. And even if it still is after this layer, after we go and do our feather layer, uh, likely nothing will still be showing through at that after that. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the 12 Bright off, set that to the side or leave it inside the cup, um, and then use the number four round brush. I'm going to paint the beak shape a solid coat of white. I know that there's other colors that are gonna be on the beak, but for now, let's just define the shape of the beak and paint it white. So I'm gonna just kind of start over here at the top and the, the two curves that kind of go inwards on the head. And then this shape goes down and then the beak goes to a point. If you don't get it to go to a, a point and it's a little bit curved or flat, that's fine too. And then the beak actually is a little bit curved over here. So I'm just painting the outside part first, so the, the shape, and then once I have that outlined, I can go ahead and paint that in solid. Then I'm gonna rinse the number four round brush off and we'll get this 12 bright brush out of the water as well. Set that to the side. Um, we will be using the number four round brush for this next step. I'm gonna start painting the feather texture in and for the feather texture, I'm gonna load some fresh primary red on my palette. We'll be using the same color combination that we use for the first layer of the flamingo. Um, only we're going to do different kinds of paint strokes for this kind of um, feathered texture paint strokes. So load your four round brush in the primary red and you can grab a little bit of white too. And we want to kind of start out so it's a darker color than what the first layer is so that it, it can show up. Um, so I'm loading my brush in mostly primary red but we want to kind of do this color variation thing just like when we added the first layer and we added white and some of that yellow and medium magenta. We're doing the same thing for these kind of strokes. So this is these are round brush strokes and we're doing little tiny um, curved lines that kind of contour and go in the shape and you're just doing little dashed lines on the head. So they're curving around the head and then when we get to the neck area, we're gonna do more sort of dashed lines that kind of curve down and go in the direction of the shape of the neck. And as you go to reload the brush, you're grabbing different amounts of your color each time. So I added a little bit of the white on my brush right there and those strokes just curvy strokes depending on where you are so right here they're kind of curving and going in the shape of the head now you don't have to cover all of your first layer with these types of strokes the point of the first layer is that we still want some of that kind of showing through this layer here and so as you're painting this don't worry about covering it a hundred percent um, grabbing different amounts. So right there we did some more of the medium magenta and started doing the curvy strokes down the neck. Now I'm going to do this simply to just kind of clean things up a little bit, but I'm taking the wet baby wipe and kind of wiping off the chalk residue here. Uh, if you're doing this too, you want to be really careful not to spread any of the wet paint. So 
If you really want to erase all your chalk, you can let this dry real quick and then erase it. Or we could have erased this before doing this step, but I want to kind of clean this up so it'll be helpful in making sure that I have the shape of the flamingo accurate and know where I'm painting all these feather strokes at without the chalk line kind of in interfering with anything. So just be really careful. But the baby wipe will erase that chalk and also lift off the little chalk residue pieces. If you're doing this and you accidentally smudge some of your paint, like what happened there, um, that'll quickly get, so you can quickly wipe off any of the smudged paint um, as long as you don't let that dry. So after we got all the chalk out of the way, we can continue on with our feather texture. So we're going to do the same thing all down his neck. So if I'm in kind of a darker area, um, I want to add maybe lighter feather texture so that we get enough contrast to see it. If I'm in kind of a lighter area, I can do darker. But it's still, it'll show up simply because we're doing different kind of strokes than the first layer. So again, we're kind of varying this. We add a little bit of white towards the left part of the neck. Gives it kind of a little bit of a highlight when you do that. A little bit of pink, blend that in. It's all just line strokes that kind of all smoothly blend together. We'll add some more of the primary red. So in the sort of lower right area, I intentionally made that slightly darker. So I'm adding more of that primary red. That's the dark pink color. Go down here. That one gets a lot of that dark primary red. Same kind of strokes, but they're just going in that direction. See how it's curving down? We are going to use the big brush for the flamingo's body. We're not going to use the little brush for this. So we want to just do the whole neck and we can do part of the front part of the body area, but we're gonna switch to our bigger brush here when it's time to do that. I'm gonna add some more of these darker strokes on this side. Make sure the shape is all accurate, like a crisp line edging to it. Um, if you want, some of the feathers can kind of stick out of the, of the neck a little bit. And then right here, these, see how this changed direction? So those curvy dash lines are going this way now. And adding that little bit of white, lighter color on the left side gives it kind of some highlight. Adding a little bit of light color on the top and bottom part of the head and then grabbed more of that pink on my palette to kind of help blend that in a little bit. So you can see that little bit of light color helps to create some more of that feather texture. So I'm not really pressing hard on the brush and I'm using just the tip of it. And that's how I create those thin kind of feathery lines um, versus if I was pressing hard on the brush and pressing all the way and using a lot of paint on the, all of the bristles. It's just a little bit of paint on the tip of the bristles. We're going to switch to this number eight round brush next. So set your number four aside and grab your number eight. So this brush is going to help us create some larger feather strokes because it's a larger brush with a, a nice tip to the bristles as well. So it's gonna create the thick and um, thin and pointed ends of the feathers. So let's start by loading this in medium magenta and titanium white, a little bit more white than pink so that this shows up light. We can always go lighter or darker, but let's make sure it's nice and light at first so that these feathers will show up and then let's start right here where that curve part is, where that neck meets the body. And we're just doing kind of these left and right angled strokes. They sort of fan out and overlap each other. And then we can do this next row. 
So this next row, I'm doing more of these kind of curved sort of strokes. And that time, I pressed kind of harder on my brush to make those lines a lot thicker. And the nice thing about this brush is that we can do thick and thin. So if you press hard, your stroke gets thicker and then you can kind of release the pressure. And on the end of that, it kind of goes to more of a point. And then on the edging of the flamingo's back, we're going to have some feathers kind of sticking out. So to create those thinner lines, you can use the tip of that brush and that creates thinner lines. I'm going to add more titanium white to my palette. Kind of mix that in with the pink. So see how I'm holding the brush kind of vertically? Gives you a little bit more control over it. I'm going to do another row of those feathers. And each sort of row is going to overlap that previous row. But then I'm going to also make sure that these part, these feathers here at the top of his back, they're kind of curving and sticking out over that edge, that first layer that we painted. They're sticking out. See how they're just kind of curving and going counterclockwise. And I'm going to fill the rest of his body with these larger feather strokes. And then if you want, you can grab some of that yellow. We can even have some of these feathers look like they have kind of a yellow tone to it. If it's too yellow, we can always go back and add more pink or white to it to make it more of a coral color. That gives it a really pretty color variation. So again, we're not trying to cover up the entire first layer, that under layer that we painted. We're just simply adding this feather texture over it and we still want to see that under layer color. So making these feathers curve downwards and these are showing up. We're using the same colors as our first layer, but they're showing up because I'm adding more titanium white into them so they're lighter. Thick strokes curving down. Lots of variety in color. If you're not using this exact brush, um, you can kind of switch back and forth. So you can use a small pointed brush for some of these smaller feather pieces that are sticking out on the edge. And then you can switch back and forth between your kind of larger round brush that doesn't have a tip to it. So I'm going back here with kind of a lighter layer. So we have that lighter highlight color at the top and I'm just simply loading the very tip of that brush into that titanium white. I'm going back over some of those feathers. So I'm adding like a second feather texture layer on top of that. Over here in the lower right, this is that part where it's a little bit darker. I'm going to load my brush in just the primary red, so that dark pinkish red color. Just adding kind of a second layer in there. There's still white on my brush, so it is showing up kind of lighter, but that's okay. Just going back with that second layer. And I, I am not going to do a second layer everywhere. Um, if you keep adding more color to this, you it's going to kind of affect you negatively because it's going to just kind of blend together. Um, so you want to kind of find that balance of blending but not over blending. Add more of this, the extra feather pieces that are kind of sticking out. And then a few kind of brighter pieces over here on the left. But again, we don't want to keep adding more and more because we still want that first under layer to still be showing through. So there's a different angle of this. And let's go ahead and wipe off any leftover chalk residue, kind of cleaning up the beak area because I'm going to do the detail on the beak next. So for the beak, we have Mars Black. There's a little bit of primary red and medium magenta in it as well. I'm gonna take my number four round brush and load that into the water, kind of tap it dry. Um, sometimes it helps to pinch the bristles 
and you're going to do a, a small detail that gathers all the bristles together and then you can load your paint and your bristles are all nice and gathered and you can do more detail work a little bit easier. So the tip of his beak is black. So we have like this kind of curve shape, little curve here on the left part of the beak. So that's painted in solid. And on the top part of the beak, but kind of the right side of it, it kind of fades out a little bit right here. I'm gonna just very thinly outline that bottom edge. And then right in the middle, we have this other curved line using just the tip of that to create that thin line. So we knew that like dividing line between the top and bottom of his beak. And this is the part where it kind of fades out. So right here, I'm dragging that black upwards and letting it kind of dry out to look like it's kind of fading out and blending in with the rest of the white. Even though that white is dry and we're not gonna be able to blend, we can kind of dry brush that black make it look faded. And then a little bit of outlining right here. And then I'm not gonna outline all of the beak. And we have a little bit of primary red on the right, on the left side of the beak. So I'm gonna take the round brush, grab my primary red. Of course, I rinsed all that black off. I'm just gonna do like a little kind of shape, a little triangular shape almost, diamond shape inside of the bottom part of his beak. We have kind of the little oval shape, the upper right, and then you can use medium magenta for this or you can just mix white with the primary red. Right here, I'm just kind of dragging that lighter pink color upwards, kind of like what we did with the black. We just kind of dragged it and let it fade out, doing sort of the same thing right there. Gives it a little bit of color, pink color. So really the only kind of pure white part of the beak is on the right upper right side. Let's rinse that color off the brush and let's do the eye next. For the eye, you'll need some fresh cad yellow light on your palette and then take your clean and dry number four round brush and we're gonna paint a little sort of oval for his eye. So just a little bit of yellow right there on the tip of the brush. And then where that kind of pointed part of the beak overlaps the head, just slightly above that is where we're gonna paint the little oval shape. It's like an elliptical shape. It's almost kind of like pointed, almost like a cat eye shape. And then that didn't really show up with just that white. So I'm gonna go back over that with white and kind of mix that yellow into it so it's not white, but it's a very, very light yellow. So that shows up a lot better. And then without rinsing the brush, grab some primary red. We're gonna do an outline on the outer part of the eye. So one outline and two outlines, so two curves. And then grab some of the lighter pink color on your palette and go over that one more time. Go on the outer part of that darker outline and I just did a curve on the top part and not the bottom part. Then let's rinse and dry and grab the Mars black. So kind of squeeze that water off of that, pinch the bristles, grab a little bit of black right there on the tip of the brush, there on the end, twist it. Twisting it really helps gather that paint right there where you need it. Little tiny black dot. It's not exactly in the center, it's kind of a little bit more to the right of the center. We're gonna go ahead and rinse our four round brush off. And so we're done with the flamingo details, unless you wanna do touch-ups later, but we are gonna move along and do our sun and water reflection next, which was is pretty much the last things that we have to add to this painting. So for the sun, 
I'm going to take, I took my number four round brush and just titanium white. There's no yellow in this sun, so it's just white. Make a little tiny circle, and then you can take your finger and you can smear it. So that makes your circle kind of blurry at first. It's going to create that glow. Uh, and then you can paint a circle inside of that. So a second circle, it's going to create your sun. So this second circle is not going to be as large as that blurry dot. It's going to be smaller. And so there's our sun. That's all we need to do for the sun. And then let's take our white and start making water reflection lines. I grabbed equal parts cad yellow light and titanium white. And just the tip of the brush, we're going to do horizontal strokes to create this reflection. So we're making a vertical area of water reflection just under where we painted our sun. These lines are smaller and closer together in the distance and a little bit longer and kind of more spread apart as you get to the bottom of the canvas and that's going to create um, the illusion of depth. So things in the background are smaller, things in the foreground are larger. We can do that with our water reflection as well. So those are just loose horizontal lines. And then after we do that vertical area of water reflection, we can go and add water reflection pretty much all throughout our water area, keeping in mind um, perspective here. So smaller little water lines closer to the horizon line and longer, more spread apart water lines closer to the bottom of the canvas. Uh, we want to keep that vertical area under the sun, the brightest part of the water reflection. So as we paint these other water lines, we can add some other colors from the sunset. So we can do the primary red mixed with the yellow, so some orange. We can use some of the pink. We can even use some of the purple and the blue in the water reflection lines. So we're just doing water reflection lines pretty much all throughout the canvas and the water area. But making sure that this part that's right under the sun, that that one is very bright. In fact, I'm adding kind of another layer of white to that area to make sure that that part is extra bright. We don't want to add too many lines and we want to leave a lot of that blue from the water still showing through. So we'll go and add maybe a little bit more orange and pink in there, but try not to cover up all of the blue. And then we could also use some of the color from the land in the reflection. So if you want to go ahead and reload your palette with some green and even some purple again, so that you can kind of make some of the, the green islands in the background if you want those to be kind of reflecting in the water too. So that's what I did there, grab some of that green. It wouldn't be reflecting all the way down the water, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add some of that cerulean blue and then make a few sort of darker reflection lines, mostly towards the bottom, maybe a few kind of in the back. You just want to be really careful not to paint any of the water lines over the flamingo. Then we can grab a little bit of that white again. Go back over this middle area, adding just a, another layer of that white. And a few more kind of scattered white lines throughout. I thought about adding clouds in the sky, but I decided to keep the sunset just plain as it is. Um, but that is it for this tutorial. Give you a little bit of a close up the detail of the head and our feathers. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.